Somebody asked me for master chain advice, so I'm gonna load up this beat in Ableton and show you guys what I put on the master. That's just a beat I made, not this last Sunday, but the Sunday before. So it's about a week old. So I made it in Ableton. Ableton is my top DAW. I use FL too. I interchange them. Sometimes I'll go to FL, sometimes I'll go to Ableton, but I mean, it's my favorite DAW. Yeah! For sure. Let's see what I did on this one. Oh, shout out to Produced by Arctic. He sent me the sample and I flipped it. So let's mute the sample for a minute. All right, so these are the drums and bass. and then the sample. I think this is gonna really help who make battle beats. Some of you guys coming with that heat, some of you guys could probably use a little bit of help, and I think this video is gonna help you step up just the way your shit hits. First and foremost, all the sounds in this beat are from Drums That Knock Volume 9. So I'll show you what I did and kind of how I thought about it and how I got that shit to slap. 808 is the B open 808, and that shit slaps and then the kick. Magic kick. And then the snare, it's the B swaggy snare, it's a rim shot. All the percussion are from Drums and Knock Volume 9. Goddamn. All the pockets in the beat, I wanted to add little percussion and that's what gives it its bounce. Everyone says, yo decap, how do you get that decap bounce? It's all the little pockets. I have a lot of pocket loops in Drums That Knock. So all these are just individual hits from Drums That Knock 9, and I put them in individual samplers on the tracks. With everything. And the melody. All these tracks are drums, and I just have little pockets of things happening. If you listen to it without the sample, now without all the percussion, very basic. It's just kick, rim shot, 808. And then the little percussions. Hi-hat, two toms, different hi-hats, plucked hi-hat. Drum roll, the game over fill, and another fill. Conga. Also, another key is panning your sounds. You want to create a wide sound stage. So that's another thing I did. And there's not tons of processing on these sounds. There's actually really none. I have some track delay, which just throws it off the grid. That's another trick to getting the bounce. You want to throw your sounds off the grid. Some tabla. Metal percussion, I called it. All right, so y'all want to see the master chain. I'm going to show you without and with the master. So here's without the master chain. And here's with it. Without it. So one of the things I tried to do in Drums at Knock is make it so you could just load up the sounds and just be good to go. So once you load up these sounds in your beat, there's not gonna be a lot of processing needed. But the master chain is super important so your shit hits. You can see like without the master chain, it's actually clipping. I'm not concerned with that because once I put the master chain on, it's gonna limit it below zero decibels. Yeah, it's clipping about six decibels with the master. And for battle beats or for hard hitting beats, I don't care about that. For the master chain, we're clipping six decibels. As you can see here, and I don't give a shit. And then with the master chain, no clipping. But you can see with the RMS meter how loud it's hitting. First plugin in the chain, Ozone 9, and I'm using Exciter, and I just have a little bit of Exciter on it. So this is without it, and with it. Very, very subtle, you almost can't hear it. It's giving some distortion to the low end stuff. Next plugin, major cheat code, I've talked about this on my channel, it's called Gulfos, made by Sound Theory. I have Recover set to 19, Tame set to 18. I'm gonna turn it off, and then on. 
It just opens up the top end. Next plug in saturator. Without it. With it. So as you can see, I have soft clip on with saturator. This is just the default preset. Dry wet's turned all the way up and I have one decibel of drive. Saturator is keeping it below zero decibels and it's giving it a soft sign curve. So it's soft clipping those peaks. I don't even have glue compressor on this. No glue, just saturator. If I were to release this track to Spotify, they would turn it down. Why? Because it's super loud. This right here is not intended to be on Spotify. This is intended to be played on SoundCloud or for an artist to use it and make a song to it, pitching it to an artist. This is not intended for a release. When you're doing your mastering, you wanna look at your LUFS meter and you wanna make sure that LUFS is not too loud. I'm gonna show you guys a tool that you can use to see what Spotify is gonna do. So I have this plugin called Meter Plugs Loudness Penalty. And what this does is anything you run through it, it's gonna tell you how much like YouTube is gonna turn it down, Spotify is gonna turn it down. You'll see this track's gonna get turned down a lot because we have a lot of clipping. You know, the, the saturator is really limiting the sound. Based on this plugin, if we release it on YouTube, it's gonna get turned down 5.4 decibels. Spotify 5.8, Tidal 5.4, iTunes 6 decibels. This plugin is key if you wanna know how much you're gonna get penalized by loudness. Let's do something different. So let's reset this. We're gonna turn this on. We're gonna take down the drive here. And then we're gonna start turning stuff down. Instead of going through the individual channels, I'm gonna put a utility before everything and just start turning it down. Let's keep the dry wet at 100% here. When you're trying to get it, you know, at the master stage, not trying to get it penalized too much, you want to focus on making sure that everything hits the way you want it to. You don't want to lose out on punch just because they're going to turn you down. So you want to find that sweet spot in between them turning you down as little as possible and getting that mix that you want. I just turned down everything. So if we turn off the master chain, you'll see before we're clipping at six decibels, now we're only clipping by about four. Then when I turn this on, So you want to find that point where it's saturating as much as you want it to, but not getting turned down too much. So we just went from iTunes cutting it down seven decibels, to now it's only cutting it down by three. And it's still hitting. Adjust things here and there, like we could turn this plugin off. We could even try like throwing some compression on it. That's the basic idea. So I showed you guys how to get it to hit hard and then how to prepare it for streaming. Ah! Decap.